All right, what's up? What's up, everyone? Welcome to Planet Xbox Podcast, episode 19. I apologize for the spottiness in advance. Uh, I've been extremely busy, uh, personal life, work life, but things are starting to come together, and I'm fin- finally starting to consistently get behind them sticks and um, and and doing being able to produce some content. So we should be coming uh, soon. So. I think the last time you guys saw me, I think I think we sk- uh, skipped a week, but a lot of things happened. I'm back with my co-host and my Game Pass buddy, my Xbox Game Share partner, ILP Lord Attic. What's going on, guys? It's uh, going to be a pretty uh, crazy week. There's been a lot going on. And a uh, shout out to Attic, man. Uh, the your production has been crazy over the past couple months. Um, it's like, I wish I can keep up with that, uh, momentum. Um, so, so kudos to you on the, the production, uh, being able to push out content on your channel daily, being able to keep up with the attic show, the iron Lords podcast, uh, a lot going on on your plate, man. Um, honestly, I say, I want to be as productive, uh, as you, but I don't want to be as busy as you, but, uh. And and still finding time to put in um, a time with these games. And speaking of that, uh, what have you been playing? Uh, playing a lot of Persona 5. I finally finished it. I do want to go back because uh, they have a, a decent new game plus that lets you take like a lot of this stuff uh, from your previous. So I want to go back and defeat the Reaper. Uh, the Reaper is like like a like an extra boss. I want to kill him. And there's a couple other things I want to do, but yeah, that's, that's what the goal is right now. You know, I, I did boot up Lords of the Fallen a little bit. Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> don't really got to talk about that on this show because uh, that, that game's a mess right now. But yeah, it's it's been a, a hectic week, man. There's a lot going on with Xbox. Yeah, a lot of going on with Xbox, man. And I'm, I'm right there with you now. I haven't touched Persona 5. I know I felt a lot of people who were counting on me to be uh, Persona 5. Um, there's still a chance I could pick it up. It's not that anything that's hard about the game. It it's that the the gameplay loop you have to stick with it. And the minute you walk away and find something fun to do or, or, or a gameplay loop that you prefer, it's hard to go back. So it's still in my plans to do. Um, but I've I beat been, the expansion too, which is crazy. Um, what I've been playing, I, I've been playing Assassin's Creed. Uh, Oh my God, Mirage! I know it's getting a lot of you know mixed feedback. Uh, personally, I don't mind the game. Uh, I think the concept is that people were expecting this to be a true call to the classic Assassin's Creed, and what it really is is just a stripped down version of the games that we recently got. So, I'm um, sure it has elements of the past, but it's still more of the same. Which me personally, Attic, you know, I love my Assassin's RPGs. Uh, this is, like I said, just a scaled down version. This, this is like a, it's a pretty much what it would be like a pretty much what I'm going to say is probably what the last game before Origins was. Like, you know how Origins was that? Uh, then, um, it was Syndicate. Yeah, yeah. But Syndicate was pretty good. And I just want them to update no, that. Unity was before Origins. Nah, nah. Syndicate. Uh Unity was 2014, Syndicate was 2015, they skipped 2016, I think they put out the the Ezio collection in 2016, and in 2017 they put out Origins, and 2018 Odyssey, and they skipped 2019 because they had a bunch of DLC for Odyssey, and in 2020 they put out Valhalla. Um, But yeah, yeah, it's, if you like the recent Assassin's Creed games, you might like this game to a certain degree, but if you like the classic Assassin's Creed games, you're not going to like this game. Um, And that's just pretty much as as real as I can get it. You guys know I rock with Ubisoft. I rock with Assassin's Creed. I was a little bit afraid of this one because I was like, I didn't want to go too much to the classics because I've enjoyed the recent um, versions of Assassin's Creed, but this one's not too bad, and I definitely plan on uh, continuing my uh, playthrough. I've been playing through Lies of P. I sort of dropped it because I got stuck. I didn't drop it because it's bad. The problem with Souls-like games, if you break your rhythm, it's tough to uh, pick it back up. So the thing is, it's like I either have to say, hey, I'm going to finish Assassin's Creed later. Let me focus on Lies of P, 
or I have to say, you know what, I'm gonna finish with Liza, uh, Assassin's Creed and then let me refocus and get back to the rhythm I had in Liza P. Because I was doing pretty good in Liza P. Uh, I think I'm somewhere in the swamps, um, which is to me has been the hardest area so far. Just the damage and the environment that the enemies do. I don't have really a space to farm. I would have to go back a couple of levels to actually farm uh, if I really want to do some decent farming. So. That's where I'm uh, struggling a bit there, and I might have to do that just to get my rhythm back, but I'm probably going to finish with something easier like Assassin's Creed before I do that. Um, I've uh, also played a little bit with the Lords of the Fallen. The Xbox version is completely broken, um, and they prioritize PlayStation and PC over Xbox according to their message. And, you know, if, th that, if this is what they do, and I don't really care. You know what I mean? Xbox has bought enough studios and publishers that I honestly don't even need to play any, you know, mid tier or, or mid class game, a third party game, um, pretty much from what Xbox is about to start doing. So Lords of the Fallen, uh, if you're on Xbox, cannot recommend it right now. Uh, you know, I've been dabbling in the crew too. I think it's cool. A lot of people are trying to give it that Forza Horizon love. It's not quite Forza Horizon. Um, it has its flaws. It has its perks, uh, but it's not Forza Horizon. It is a great knockoff attempt though. Shout out to Ubisoft. Um, Forza Motorsport. I've been playing. Uh, I played a lot of that. I'm enjoying, uh, enjoying it. Most of you guys know I, I'm not the, really the simulation version, but it's, I think this game strike the balance I'm playing on like I'm not you know I'm not challenging myself like that like I I let the game adjust the difficulty with time um, so I start off on whatever the the normal equivalent and then if I'm like crap if I'm like blasting through I just let the game increase the difficult difficulty for me um, played a lot of that I'm enjoying it it does have a few visual bugs in the ray tracing mode which I'm probably going to disable. Um, but overall, man, the game does uh, look good. It plays good. It feels good. Um, happy to have it back again. You know, Xbox has been knocking on cylinders with these releases. So right now they're getting highly criticized for everything they do, everything they drop. You know, instead of us being making being made fun of for not having games to play, we're being made fun of for playing uh, the games that they've been releasing. Um, and it's it's, it's, it's it's ridiculous. We're going to get into it, but it's been a good week. Attic, shall we get into the Patreon questions? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, man. So Patreon question, uh, we only got uh, one of them. Uh, shout out to BG, uh, Broken Games HD, our Weapon Will podcast. Uh, check out the Jiggy Do Rag song. It's on the channel. That was like the only content I put out in the last two weeks, and it's doing um, pretty well. Could be doing better. Um, but happy. I'm telling you, man, that that entertainment aspect that's your lane like you uh, gotta stop you gotta stop trying to be this the this information source and it's just like right. you gotta you you do better at making people laugh like you gotta embrace that and stop trying to like fight the people on what they want from you you're right man you're right you're right i gotta embrace it shout out to agent 1245 he says with the acquisition of ABK complete, what games do you think Xbox will make exclusively? Obviously, well-established bangers like Call of Duty, Overwatch, Diablo will more than likely stay multi-plat. But if somehow a third-person shooter StarCraft spinoff game was made by The Coalition, do you think Uncle Phil would man up and keep it exclusive? What do you think? If... The coalition would be the ones making the version of the game, like he says, like like he would hope. Then they will be a full blown exclusive. It, Starcraft does Starcraft even exist on Xbox and PlayStation? To any I, degree, I don't know. Yeah. So he's saying if Coalition made a Starcraft, yeah, he said he, he says he says obviously games like Call of Duty, Overwatch, and Diablo will m remain multi plat. But if somehow a third person shooter Starcraft spinoff game was exclusive. made, yeah, exclusive. it would be exclusive. I think anything outside. It's it. Go ahead. To be honest with you, anything, you know, they do anything. Out of the ordinary, it's exclusive. Yeah, like I, I don't. The thing is that they don't need PlayStation for these games to do well. They they could easily make that money off of PC, and it's most likely where the as long as it's good. If it's good, it would be fine. Uh, but you know, it the majority of the people that like StarCraft on PC already as it is. So it's just like, what are they really going to game? Because like, the funny thing is they they'd be acting like everyone 
that sells games on PlayStation be making all this money. Like it Persona is like a 92 on Metacritic, and I think it only sold like three million copies. Like it, it, it's it, and that's like since the Xbox one and ps4 generation the the persona stuff's been going might have sold more than three but i know it hasn't like sold more than like final fantasy 10 uh i mean 10 uh, 15 uh you know for the most part i think we can all agree that a lot of people you know they they go where they feel they're getting the most for bang for their buck and i just don't personally seeing i don't he said third person too i don't do you think do you think the playstation people would buy that a third person StarCraft? Mm-hmm. Um, I think anybody if it's done correctly. If it's done then. correctly, yeah, it, yeah, but I don't think it would I just don't think it would be the, the effort would be there uh to put it on PlayStation. I don't think Coalition would actually develop anything for PlayStation. Uh, I mean if if Xbox told them to, they would. It's just what at what Xbox here's the, if they if they do have a solid experience as a third person action adventure. Mm-hmm. I find it hard to believe that they would give that to PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, if they had a, if they had like something similar to what they normally make, that third person over the shoulder action adventure, I don't think, I don't think they would just openly give that to Xbox. I mean, to to PlayStation. I think that would be an exclusive. You know, for the most part. Only really expect like these big franchises. And keep in mind, PlayStation only signed a a deal for Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. I expect this is what's going to happen. If if Blizzard get their act together or Overwatch, I know they've been funny with this Overwatch 2, which now is feeling like a ripoff. Um, I expect obviously anything updated to Overwatch 2, the expansion, all that stuff. That's PlayStation. Call of Duty, obviously, PlayStation. It, it takes them 10 years to make a Diablo game. So who cares at that point? I don't really like it. Diablo is not even in the, um, the cards right now. I think anything outside of that, you no, know, that trio game, I even think games like crash and spy hero would actually just be exclusive because they, they didn't get the, I, I, I think too. I think too. Those, those games, I don't think it's going to sell mm-hmm. like game busters on anything. Mm-hmm. I think those games would be more beneficial to game pass than a lot of other games. Yeah. Uh, that's why you know and, and what's funny is like people don't want to talk about we don't we don't know what type of content something like gay pass is gonna, oh, apologize gay pass is gonna deliver in the past couple of years like if the call of duty thing drives game pass subscriptions to like 70 to 80 million it i could see a world well, when that ten year deal is up, and if that's consistent, and they do hit that hundred million by that that year, I could see a war where they just say we don't need PlayStation at all. Like th- yeah. this deal's up, you're not getting nothing from Activision Blizzard King, and that's probably why PlayStation fought so hard over it because they know you know they don't know what's going to happen, but they know that's a possibility, and they 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 prefer not to be in that position and and, and get the the deal canceled. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I. Um. No. I agreed. Like. There. Like. I. No. I don't think they need places for any of this stuff. Obviously, they're gonna keep them because it's free money. Uh, especially on Call of Duty and and, and people, are on PlayStation. They. I mean, they relied on Call of Duty, uh, almost exclusively for multiplayer. Um. That and what what Destiny and Fortnite. So I think, yeah, I think what happens is they didn't make a big, a big enough fuss about the other IPs that Activision and, and Blizzard own. They really only focused on Call of Duty. So that's why I think, you know, and, and you can make a crash game almost every year, every two years. Right. Um, they can they come fairly close. Um, I know they're making a lot of noise about Guitar Guitar Hero, which I think is almost certain all, automatically already coming back. It, it's like the, the one you I think that's going to be successful, or you think that's gonna um, fall? it's I don't think it's going to flop because now it's actually can be more accessible. It's probably easier to make when you consider it. Uh, because the Guitar Hero could literally launch on your phone, your Xbox, streaming devices, um. And, and be just fine. It doesn't have to 
haul in the graphics. And it won't be like an annual game. It'll just be a live service game. You know what I mean? It, it, I think a game like Guitar Hero and DJ Hero are better suited now um, in the game as, as a service period than they were standalone games. They were previously they were annual phenomenons, right? They were annual hits. Um, they would always be, you know, a number one seller. Um, I think it's it's worth it. It's, it can come back. I don't think it will flop. I think it's just that the way I think the it won't be as big of a deal when it does come. And I think its availability immediately will be more wide spread um, because of how it's going to launch. It's, it's definitely launching directly on like a, you know, your iPhone, Android, on your Xbox, on your, you know, PC, even PlayStation and stuff like that. It's automatic game pass and all this other stuff. It'll be all over the place. I think they'll be able to execute uh, a, a guitar hero. I don't even think they need to change anything. What make the UI 4K and put today's music in there? And if the license of today music, which is garbage, <laughs> is too expensive, go back and get the uh, the older uh, stuff. I think it's going to determine how successful they're able to put the pricing of the tools they use to make it. Mm -hmm. You know, if mm -hmm. the guitar is overpriced, and you know all the little equipment that they use for guitar hero i don't think it'll succeed i i don't i just find it hard to believe that today's generation will go out there and spend a hundred dollars on a guitar to play guitar hero mm -hmm. so maybe i'm wrong about that but you know i feel like there's too much free to play stuff and there's too much entertainment that you can get for free to go out there and have to pay 60 for the game and then turn right around and have to pay 100 or however much the control uh the uh guitar controller was so I, I got to see how that goes. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, come on, my bad. Give me one second. I'm trying to text my way and help somebody through work. <laughs> Already messing up? Nah, man. nah, nah. I just need some assistance. All right. So it, the wait is over the 20 month. Uh, back and forth between the CMA, FTC, Sony, it's all done. And uh, Microsoft has successfully and officially closed the deal with all the approvals that they needed uh, with uh, Activision Blizzard, Ubisoft owning the streaming rights uh, to Activision games. That was the CMA's big win. Um and uh, they, so far, no town hall. Um, so far, no, uh, uh, no town hall. Um, not, I don't know why I called it a town hall, but they did a, they did last when they did the Bethesda, they did like a round table, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, the round table didn't take the what? Well, yeah, no, because the deal got approved, right? And then six months later, they did the round table at the, the closing date. So, when do you think we get a round table? Um, either I think we get the round table whenever they have the announcement ready for the majority of the game pass games, you know, I, I think that's when you'll see something like that. Probably beginning of the year. Okay. Okay. Um, I think, uh, when do we start getting, cause they, but like Bethesda games came into the fold uh, much sooner. Uh, when do we think uh, Activision games start to filter? We, we know they made an earlier announcement like last week about you no know, Diablo and the upcoming Call of Duty game not being in Game Pass this year, but like more than likely sometime next year. But when does their their back catalog start to filter out? Uh, I'd say within two months. Within two I, months. I don't think. I don't think all of them are going, obviously, but I do think a huge portion of them are going to go like day and day in the game pass. Well, I mean, not day and day, but I think, you know, the moment they're able to, they mm -hmm. will. We'll just have to see. You know, there's a lot of variables that we don't have access to right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much back end stuff they have to do to get stuff on this. If you remember a couple weeks ago, you saw Call of Duty uh, stuff showing up that's supposed to be in Game Pass. So, you know, there is to mm -hmm. some degree 
this already being done in the background because yeah. it's not a coincidence that that was showing up. Yeah, I think they I were. Saw I think they were in advanced warfare. Yeah, that was showing that it's supposed to be in Game Pass. Yeah, they want. I, 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 I'm looking forward to it. like the thing is is that I don't know people make fun of us about like us asking about like old game stuff. Believe it or not, there was a when I wanna say there was like a three or four year period where I was boycotting like Call of Duty. Like I was, in, I think the last. So what happened was I bought Call of Duty Ghosts with the launch of the Xbox One. Um, I bought. Uh, advanced warfare that was when they first put on like some sort of like mech suit because i think that came out the year titanfall came out um i actually enjoyed that one too um i bought that one and i think the next year it was like a black ops thing i didn't buy that um i think that was black ops 3 and then uh, the year the game that came out after that was i think infinite warfare i didn't buy that i didn't buy black ops 4 and I didn't buy. Um, I, I think I bought World of War. What, when did Slut? I think I bought World War. The first the, when it went back to World War Two, I bought that. And then whatever came out after that, I don't think I bought. Uh, and I didn't. I don't think I bought Call of Duty consistently until Cold War came out. Cold War came out. No, no, no. Modern Warfare 2019 came out. I, I got that. I, I recall beating the campaign on the on the Xbox One X. Um, Black Ops Cold War. I ended up buying that because that was a launch title uh, for the Series X and PS5. I thought that was I thought it was pretty good. I, I enjoyed that campaign. Um, and I bought somebody bought me Modern Warfare 2. I didn't actually buy it. Somebody else bought it. I kind of helped because. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 and then Modern Warfare 3. I mean, I didn't intend on buying it. I don't think I, I don't think I I don't think I will. I would I would probably wait for Game Pass. Um uh I, I will probably wait for Game Pass. I didn't uh we own obviously uh Diablo, but Diablo's not really my fix. Um but you know, those, those some of those older Call of Duty games I will play. Some of those, th- there's a lot of ones that came out in the 360 era that I didn't play, um, and I didn't uh, buy. There's uh, so in there. There's games like Prototype, which I never played, uh, never owned. Um, there's games like um, Crash Bandicoot, where I've always had an interest in them, just never pulled the trigger to buy any of them. So. Activision, when they uh, when they release their games in the Game Pass, is going to have immediate impact depending on which games they do. And I'm hoping that Jason Ronalds and his team come up in the clutch and do some you know FPS boost, some uh, res boost, and some maybe some backwards compatibility updates. Um, the last time they touched backwards compatibility, I think was either the Bethesda deal or the anniversary of Xbox, the 20 year anniversary of Xbox. Yeah, I, I think you'll see that. I think we'll see that. I'm, 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 I'm hoping for it. Um, what else? Uh, so, a lot of people, you know, ate crow. You know, there was a lot of uh, people talking when the CMA, I think, initially blocked the deal. And what was it, April? They uh, that they tried to, you know, block the deal, and people pretty much announced that it's over, right? You know, the deal. I know there's this famous. Uh, clip from um, Dreamcast guy and this uh, famous clip for um, um, uh, you got Dreamcast guy. Uh, there's Marlin. There's uh oh man. There's no uh, Porter Rock. There's these clips that's going going um that's going around. Showing how everybody was reacting when um, the deal failed, and in comparison to now, so I thought pretty much what we got there was pretty much funny. Uh, all the stuff that's going on um, with that, uh, I'm not sure if you got to see any of uh, uh, the banter with people going in it about what they were doing during the original CMA. Um, announcement to what the final verdict is today yeah i saw it you know it, it, here's the thing man now ain't nobody know what was gonna happen in mm-hmm. that you know i actually at one point i didn't care i was like whatever ends this quicker <laughs> like 
because it's just you know it, i just got tired of talking about it and then people will sit there and they'll say well addict if you're tired of talking about why you make content on it because that's what seems like everyone wants to hear about yeah it. yeah you know it, it, what's funny is they think because they dumbass don't want to hear about the CMA, uh, cma stuff and the you know the whoever the <laughs> ftc one they act like everyone's like that and that's just not the case the majority of people wanted to hear about that deal. And it's 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 funny, man. Yeah. No, everybody wanted to a lot of people front like they didn't want to hear about a deal. But the thing is, is that that was the only thing getting views. People have literally grown their tri- uh, channels by triple. Just talking about uh, the pretty much follow is keeping day by day updates of the APK, ABK deal. It, it, part of me is like disappointed that because I, I I took a stance that I wasn't going to cover mm-hmm. CMA in the the Activision deal, but part of me regrets it a little bit because yeah. I missed out on a lot of like growth that I could have done. But the other part of me is like, you know what? I didn't want to just mask my channel for a bunch of people that only wanted like updates and stuff like that. You know, I, I want genuine Xbox fans, mm-hmm. gamers. In general, that just want to be updated on stuff. Uh, you know, six months to a year ago, I made uh, a Halo Season Five trailer, a Halo Season Five news chain mm-hmm. that, that video is flopping. It's gonna be pla- it, It's gonna be triple, tri- triple copper, triple plastic. <laughs> you know, uh, but now you know, I made a video that was talking about it, and it did, it did, it did good. So it's just like. You know, I get it. I if I had my way, the the majority of the coverage I would cover would be strictly updates on the games that mm-hmm. Microsoft has. Unfortunately, there's more news in the industry than just that. Mm-hmm. And the past year has really been only the you know the stuff that they're doing because the the ABK deal because that was like the biggest thing going on. You know, what's funny is like people sit there and they'll say, why are we covering that? But then they're not watching like me making Fable videos or, you know, anything related to that. Yeah. It's just like, you know, you got to get the audience that's going to support you in the long run. And, you know, part of me wishes I would have took that a little bit more seriously. But the other part is like, you know what? Things things happen for a reason. Maybe, you know, I could maybe could have blown up five, six thousand subs over the year and a half that this has been talked about. And, you know, it's unfortunate that I didn't, but I think everything is working out the way it was supposed to, you know, as far as like people sitting there saying stuff like that. I, at one point I thought it might get canceled so I can understand why other people would, uh, would have thought the same thing at that time. Uh, because when CMA blocked it, you know, it was looking pretty sus. It, it, it was, didn't know if it was going to go through or not. Yeah, um, yeah, it was looking like tough, but the, the crazy thing is, it, it is shocking that it got as far, you know, as it did, and it required all this because at the end of the day, the game, the way that the game industry works, and all the players and parties involved, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, it's still shocked that the CMA took the stance that they did, and the FTC taking a stance that they are. It's like, um, it, it, it's really like baffling. So my thing is, do you think? Uh, this ABK deal kind of hurts Microsoft potential to add to their portfolio through acquisitions. Yes. I think that's the biggest thing people ain't really looking at too much. I do think that to a point it is going to hurt them Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, people, I I know that they've come out openly and said, you know, we're still active buying. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if they're still active buying after this deal closed Mm -hmm. because it was looking like it might not have went through. And then they would have been out of all those billions of dollars, uh, part of the agreement of buying them. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we don't know. For all we know, this is exactly how Microsoft thought this whole process was going to go. You know, when it comes to. Yeah, they prepare for an 18 month battle, it just happened two months longer. Yeah, so we mm-hmm. this could have literally just been part of the the plan since day one. Uh, but I, I don't know. Part of me feels like the CMA caught them a little bit more off guard than everyone else because they they completely bent over the FTC and spanked them. 
Mm-hmm. So it, it, it just it feels like the CMA caught them off guard because the fact that they offloaded the online infrastructure of ABK mm, uh, streaming you know, cloud right. services mm-hmm. to to Ubisoft makes it feel like I feel like that's something they wouldn't have wanted to do, yeah. uh, but they had to. I mean, my thing is they weighed the options. They're like you're not going to just make a decision like I'm the blue, but I think they looked at the people who they had good partnerships with. They could have done it with like EA. They could have done it with uh 2k and they could have done it with ubisoft i think they picked ubisoft because ubisoft has actually been struggling ubisoft had something to gain from it and ubisoft could be like a, a you know a future acquisition um um arm um and in, in, in a distant future uh for them and, and like maybe there's probably some agreement like there because the, obviously if it's ubisoft is acquired by another party uh that impacts this agreement that they have with microsoft they, they they lose access to it right so in that case you know if anybody's going to you know acquire them it would probably be best that um it, it, it's microsoft but ubisoft i believe is based out of the i think the uk if i'm not mistaken over there so it, it might be difficult they if they're going to acquire someone they, they got to keep their they gotta be. I know, like the FTC put a rule, like they wanna, they want, you know, it gotta be like four, five billion or less, um, a lot, or they gotta look for a studio that doesn't, or, or a publisher, if they're gonna continue with publishers that don't require all these approvals, or they just do studios who they can buy for millions, and those won't go through those regulatory scrutiny at all. Um, so. It's, it, it, the crazy thing is, it's like, I, I mean, as an Xbox fan, um, I do feel greedy, right? Because I'm thinking like, yo, they, 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 they should be able to buy more. Because I think what happens is I look at the people that I would like for them to add. Like, I look for like, you know, obviously Sega is one of them, but, you know, that's another uh, publisher. There's a Sobo who I think will fit well. There's certain Affinity who I think they need to support studios uh, to help carry out Halo. And there's these... You know, other talented publishers, uh, developers that made games and they, um, you know, who may not be able to get the backing to, to continue and on. But uh, what's uh, what's uh, your, uh, you know, thoughts on that one? Uh, I don't know, man. It, when it comes to the whole thing, I think there's just too much mystery behind it. You know, uh, we need more information. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm with you there. So the uh, first order like of of a business for this ABK deal, what do you think Microsoft uh, should do first? How do they treat the rest of the year? Are they just quiet and let everything ride out? Or do they do they give us like a holiday, like uh, something to look forward to the holidays? You know what I mean? I mean, we want something because we're yeah. gamers, uh, you know, we're in this for self preservation. Like we only care about ourselves. But yeah. if you really put what they've done this year on paper, mm-hmm. do you think they really do need to do anything? I mean, look at game year, uh, game pass. Uh, they have some persona games coming into game pass at the beginning uh, the end of this year and the beginning of next year. They have, uh, not to mention the game pass games. They already have people got game. See, that's the difference. So people sit there and they say, why, you know, there'll be some dry spells on on Microsoft, and no one's ever denying that. But you know mm-hmm. what the difference is between us and, and some of these haters, Smooth? What's up? I'm willing to admit, yo, there is dry spells. Yeah. But it's hard to hate on shit when they're giving me shit in Game Pass to play. Yeah. It's different. Even though it's on everything, I just have to download it and try it out, and if I like it, I keep playing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like... I- my thing is people don't like when I do this. The thing is, is that people get on us for not demand better, demand better, right? When Xbox was, well, we do, we do nothing yeah. but say we we demand them to do better. Yeah, when Xbox was down um, on its releases, especially in 2022, you know, both you and I are, you know, we have videos, tweets of our disappointment. Uh, and just just going at them for what they did in 2022 
Like, I literally were y- tagging people like, how the hell did you agree to let Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo be exclusive when you knew you had 2022 coming? Remember, like when you had nothing there, like uh, I've, I've, I've said my complaints at 2017. I, like I, I've, I've had. I remember complaints. when Starfield was initially launched, uh, shown with that trailer mm-hmm. and they didn't show us anything. They just showed us homegirl getting in the, the ship. And the chair going up, and that's all they showed us. And I remember being very critical about that because I didn't like the way they did that. Mm-hmm. But people don't talk about that, you know. Yeah. They, they 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 talk about the fact that you know I don't flip out on everything known to man. Like, look, you can get your point across about being an asshole. Yeah. And yeah. the problem is, is people want you to be the asshole. They don't they don't care that you know. Look, I go out there, I can sit there, and I can say all kinds of crazy stuff. But it's just like, first off, is that really necessary? Mm-hmm. That's the biggest question. Is it necessary for me to say a game is dog shit to 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 get my point across? No, it's not. Yeah, no, you're uh, you're right. It's it's the funny thing is is that um, with us and and what people wanting us to criticize on Xbox, it's like, yeah, they. It's not enough to say that, hey. You know, this is what we want. This is not good. They want us to like, like to go ham on it, to parade around it. They want us to put daily content about it. And then on top of that, they want us to praise PlayStation in the process. Um, You know, you know when I knew that I had to fall back on that shit is when I flipped out on Chris Righteous on Planet Xbox that one time. Because if you notice, ever since then, I won't be. I don't be gauging and shit as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, that's one of the very few times in the entire time I've been on YouTube where I just let my emotions get the better of me. And, and it's just like, ever since then, it's like, I can't be acting like that. That's yeah. just not acceptable. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going to say is, is that, so uh, I'm going to just throw some of the, the shade back, right? Xbox has been, whether you like the games or not, Xbox have delivered multiple quality games this year. They've been nicely spread. We all started the year with Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, we got the console version of Age of Empires 2, I think within like the same week. We've gotten um, Minecraft Legends. I mean, obviously that's for, you know, a certain crowd. We've gotten Redfall. It didn't hit the way it did, but they just showed they're proving that they're not letting this game die. We finally got the FPS update, obviously, when it launched. We weren't happy about that, but it came out, whatever. Uh, We had the, uh, you know, Quake uh, 2, I think, uh, remaster. We had Age of Empire 4 console port. We have, um, uh, man, what am I... um, I feel like I'm I'm drawing a blank. Obviously, we had Starfield and we had uh, Forza. You know, say what you want about Starfield. It's it personally, it's my game of the year. Um, I I don't think I played a game that's I think mine's better. Still Boulder's Gate. Um, and and Forza it is what it is. These were all you know uh, quality games. And the thing is, is that you got people on the other side spent the entire year, uh, you know. Throwing jabs at Xbox or trying to find something wrong with the Xbox in their games, and on the other on the other side, they are in they're in the middle of a freaking drought. But they're applying that pressure and energy on Xbox. When Xbox was in a drought, we were forced to apply this pressure and energy on Xbox, which we rightfully should because we wanted games to play. You know what I mean? So, you know, you know, these PlayStation guys will you know parade around like ha, no games, da da and no no give props to the Xbox guys that's calling Xbox out. Now we're and, getting and the, the games thing, mm-hmm. real quick, smooth. The yep. funny thing is, you know, I was sitting there, I was I was writing like my bulletin points for yesterday's video. Mm-hmm. Then it hit me. This is why PlayStation channels or anti Xbox channels. They're not PlayStation channels. If you were a PlayStation channel in the past six months, the only thing you're going to be talking about is negative ass shit for the most part. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, think about the content that Xbox gets versus PlayStation gets. What the hell is the PlayStation content creator going to talk about on a consistent week by week basic throughout the year? Nothing. Yeah. 
the PlayStation really isn't out the door with information like that. And when they are, it, it seems like here recently it's negative ass stuff. Like look at look at the the showcase. Mm-hmm. Most people that did a showcase prediction, they were wrong as hell. Yeah. And and that's not their fault because they expected PlayStation to do stuff like that. It's like, you know, the only content you're making is negative ass content right now. And that's why I feel like we got to highlight more channels that are doing good on PlayStation. Like, you know, what's up PlayStation with Jabari and, and Persona? Like, mm-hmm. you know, sure, are they with the console war stuff so sometimes? Yeah, but I feel like they're one of the few channels that have a podcast that is dedicated to talking about PlayStation. They don't, but they, they don't just they're on talk about games in general, too. They 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 they, they have a games focus. So a lot of these content creators, they can't hold a conversation about games too long. It's like it's like ADHD. Um, those guys can can keep they can literally do a podcast straight about games, right? Um, so the thing is, that's where I, where I I, I respect respect their uh, podcast. But a lot of other people, it's like I, like I really can't handle is because again they're in the middle of a drought where the only things they've gotten has been provided by Square Enix that aren't really, there aren't really theirs. You know what I mean? Like these are like time exclusives and they're, they're done by Square Enix. So Spider-Man's the going to be the true game. Obviously that's there. It's going to be great, whatever. But the thing is, is that how is it that you go through a drought and use all that energy on Xbox? Who's not actually in a drought, who's actually producing out games. And all you did when they put out games it's look for things you relied on. If the meta score wasn't uh, wasn't um, bad enough, you had to go to a other source like Steam. Like that's where you're gonna. If uh, if it was selling great or it had a lot of uh, users, then you had to rely on Steam users. Well, it's uh, not this many players on Steam, so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a flop. It's like you guys threw all these energy. You talk about oh, not having games, but the games are there, and then now you're not even utilizing the whole. I want Xbox to compete. I uh, I want Xbox to put out quality games. They're like, dude, they just put out quality. None of the games that they put out has been white. The only they only put out really one game you would consider trash or trash standards, and that was Redfall. And that just is just going to get better uh, with time, right? So, but other than that, all their other games have been pretty solid. And every game that's more so rated like a B plus or a B or a B minus in terms of like overall score. They're literally, they're not even sharing those scores. They're only sharing freaking what people are doing on Steam. Like, and and, and they're parading Steam scores and Steam um, player count to a bunch of people playing on Xbox consoles. Like, what does that mean? Um, I, again, a lot of these people aren't genuine when it comes to discussing video games, when it uh, comes to discussing, like, Xbox. And no, Xbox really can't win or do good in their eyes, since they don't have games and content, it, or you, you, you bash them rightfully, whatever. What they do, regardless of how the games come out, if it's good, if it's great, good, or bad, you rate them, you talk about them as they're all bad. Like a, a game that Xbox puts out, they can't have a single flaw because that single flaw will override anything that it does good. So right now, Call of Duty is going to be moving forward. It's going to be trash. Call of Duty will be trash. Crash will be trash. Uh, anything that Activision does that benefits Xbox will be trash. So, um, yeah. it's just one of those things, man. It, 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 that's why I made that post last week that said, if some of these PlayStation people that does nothing but talk about Xbox day in and day out. They have six, seven hour podcasts dedicated where they have a giant jerkle circle, uh, jerk, circle jerk, jerk fest, mm-hmm. circle jerk going on about what Xbox isn't doing right, what Xbox isn't doing, and what they're doing wrong. And they actually held PlayStation accountable more often. I feel like things would be changed because I feel like it's gotten to the point. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, Smooth, but it, it does feel like some of these PlayStation people are openly, you know looking down on playstation when they do stuff like this but it doesn't feel genuine because the day after it happens you never hear them talk about it again yeah 
It, it's like, oh, so you, you, when the news dropped, you made your little tweet and then you acted like that tweet is what actually ha- ha- ha made it go down. And it's just like, to me, I don't know. I don't know. Like, part of me feels like, are you doing it because you're generally upset and you feel like they shouldn't be doing it? Or are you doing it because as a content creator, you feel like your opinion is going to be way less unless you speak out? Yeah. Like, I don't know that these what these these rules on on these people, but it is ridiculous. I am happy, you know, that, you know, Xbox had a you know good year. Uh, I got a question for you, though, uh, in regards to this year, you know, as we're coming towards, you know, the uh, the end of it. 2021 or 2023 for Xbox only, which was a, a better year. Xbox only, like you're only on Xbox. Yeah, yeah if you're gaming only on 2023. Xbox. 2023. 2023. Because I feel like 2021 was good, but a lot of the reason, and, and that's the year that Microsoft won uh, Publisher of the Year. Yeah. And I think the reason they won that is because you know, they had Wasteland got like an 89 or something like that. Psychonauts, like an 80. It was like a 91 or something. I think Psychonauts hit the 90s. Yeah, I think it hit the 90s on, uh, believe it or not, I think it hit, It was a 90 on the Xbox One, but it was like an 88, 89, I think, on uh, console and uh, on Series but, I mean, X and PC. That, but yeah, yeah, it was a highly ready game. It was, it was nominated for Game of the Year. And it's probably, I ain't gonna lie, I, yo, I ain't gonna hold you. It probably should have won. I literally believe that it takes two one just so an xbox game could have won because there was like three xbox game nominated and they they the highest rated game of the year nah, wasn't even nominated period wasn't even nominated for game of the year which was sports horizon five that was i a, can't <laughs> i can't co-sign that because i do think in that because that was that wasn't every year you get those you play you know this is game of the year this is it like th- this is definitely yeah, a nomination. But, yeah, I'm not saying takes like, two the is Zeldas, bad. Takes the two. Zeldas, the the uh, you know the Boulder Gate threes. Mm. I consider Starfield a game of the year contender. Uh, Resident Evil Four remake to a point. I feel like 2021 didn't really have a whole lot of those. Like yeah, it, but it, it was, that it point, was a yeah, solid a year for games. Yeah, it was a solid year for games. But but the thing is, it was here's a situation where you we, we the things to consider, right? What was the nominees you had? It takes two. Death Loop. Um, yeah, it takes two death loop, um, Psychonauts two. Uh, there was, did Returnal come out that year? I don't know. It wouldn't have been there though. I don't think Returnal got nominated for Game of the Year. Okay, but um, but my thing was like of the, all those games that were like nominated, it was like okay, Microsoft technically has two chances with Death Loop and um. And with a uh, cycle dust too, but I feel like it. I feel like it, it takes two was vindicated Joseph, and he's he's made he had like a narrative a narrative going into these uh, game awards the, the 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 last year with the uh, the um, fuck the Oscars right he did the he did the uh, he did that and he had a really good game that he dropped like you know with um, a ways out a ways out still think that was a good game. Takes two, obviously, it's pretty good, but I don't I think, think that's it a, our game of the year. I don't I know do. if it was clear cut game of the year. I felt like it takes two was a phenomenal game. I think it's our game of the year that year. Ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. But it, but at the end of the day, you know, it didn't win. Um, I feel like for Xbox, what they dropped that year, the the things things to consider that they that came out that year, you had um, they had I think. Flight Sim, uh, there was Psychonauts 2, there was Forza Horizon 5, and there was Halo Infinite. There were some, you know, third-party timed exclusive like um, the Accent, the the Ascent. There was, uh, what's the game with the the freaking, did they make a Silent Hill now? Uh, they had, um, the hell was the, the, the name of that game? Wow, there was a horror game that they made. It came out earlier in the year. Um, and now they're working on Silent Hill. Blooper, they made this game. Oh, my God. Uh, it's, oh, uh, my God. You played this girl who could go into two different realms. Uh, and I can't. Control. I can't think of the name. Oh, my God. Why can't I think of the name? I actually like the in, game. In between or something like that? Yeah, yeah. It was like, why can I think of the name? It started with an M. 
I think it started with the M. Search it up. My wife is calling. I might have to go get groceries. I might have to get groceries. Game that is between worlds. I don't know what that would be. Um, it was it was an Xbox launch title. Xbox Series. It was supposed to be a launch title, but it got delayed to like March or April. Who Blooper made it? Blooper made it. it Blooper made it. Their games are the medium. That's what. It yes, was. the medium. That that came out that year. So I thought Xbox had. A, I never played that. Good. It's a good game, man. I feel like Xbox had an impactful twenty twenty uh, one with that game. This year, I probably say is better because they did this year without a halo or a gears of war right they did it with obviously forza was still there but you know starfield like uh, again i feel like the the criticism of starfield i think is like i i have my opinion on how you know they they treated the game i thought the game was better than what they're trying to say it is uh but hold on one moment i think i need you to chime in all right yeah i mean I personally feel like 2023 is better just because of, you know, the amount of Game Pass games. I feel like they've done a good job, you know, in terms of exclusives, except for, you know, Redfall. I definitely wasn't a big fan of Redfall. There was just a lot more in their wheelhouse. There was there's more solid experiences in Game Pass because, you know, people that listening, there really hasn't been a huge portion of time going through the year where I didn't feel like I didn't have anything to play. You know, from the Persona games, there's Yakuza games on there. You know, when it comes to just the games and Game Pass in general this year, it's just I feel like every every month almost it, they 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 release something that is going to really captivate someone uh, for the entire mm-hmm. year. You know, let's let's read some of them because yeah. uh, it's it's crazy. You know, the the amount of games we had Persona three, Persona four, January nineteenth. Mm-hmm. January the twentieth, uh, Monster Hunter Rise. January the twenty fifth, uh, Hi Fi Rush. Do you need to go get groceries? No, no, keep going, keep going. Uh, uh, January the twenty seventh, Golden Eye. And I'm skipping a bunch of them because I'm just saying ones that I would yeah. see. Yeah, I'm January to... the thirty first, Age of Empire two. Then you got uh, Grid Legends, February second. Grid uh, Hot Will Unleashed, the Game of the Year edition, February seventh. Mm-hmm. Then they had uh, an EA Play if he was part of Ultimate. Madden 23 went in. Then they had the Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. That was a huge, big game. Uh, City Skylines Remastered. That was the 16th. February the 24th, Atomic Heart. February the 28th, Soul Mm -hmm. Hackers. March the 3rd. Keep in mind, this is like five days later. Yeah. Wulong Fallen Dynasty. Oh, and that was my game of the year for a hot minute. Yeah, then uh, March the 7th, Guilty Gear Strive. Then March the 9th, uh, they they put Dead Space 2 and 3 on EA Play, it looks like. It mm-hmm. looks like it's part of the cloud computing. Mm-hmm. Uh, March 17th, Valhalla. It's that you know game that was in uh, preview. Then uh, March 21st was Mila, uh, Kunai, uh, Revenant Kingdom. Then they put Goat Similar on there, Loop Hero two days after that, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo on the 12th, Minecraft Legends on the 14th, on the 18th. The, you know, yeah, Redfall made the second. <laughs> did, did Ghostwire Tokyo come in between that time frame too? Yeah, I just said Ghostwire. Oh, yeah, oh my bad. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm starting to lose my voice, so I'm not going to... Ravenlock, like, really, really uh, I, I, I should turn, if I turn the... Uh, Ray, I know Ravenlock was good. I 100 percent of that game. Um, not nah, just overall, like it, you've you got to consider that you know. I was thinking Texas Chainsaw came out, received very well. Payday uh, three, Payday three, Cocoon, which is uh, just driving Persona Tactics. Yeah, Sea of Stars, um, Lies of P, which is probably a shoe in for Game of the Year nomination at this point. Um, CSRs, CSRs. We uh, mentioned, um, yeah. There is a no Xbox. No, Xbox has been a yeah. This has been a great year for Xbox. No matter how you and, and how you cut it. That's not even talking about Starfield, mm-hmm. Starfield, Forward, Sir. Yep. Hi Fi Rush, like games that are only on their platform in terms of consoles. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, and it, you can't de- you can't deny it. No one can't deny it. But people have been all year, and that's why somehow, despite the acquisition, despite the Game Pass releases, despite the Xbox uh, exclusive content, Xbox still been getting hit as if they haven't been doing anything yet. PlayStation has literally went the whole year with increasing the price of the PlayStation, increasing the price of their subscription by like almost double the amount and not releasing uh, games uh, and overly relying on Square Enix. And again, all the hate in uh, is directed at Xbox. And I think that is ridiculous. But uh, Attic, we are going in on our pretty much our our mark so definitely want to say you know uh thank you uh to everybody watching to attic uh to bg um and to patreons for asking the questions and getting the show uh kicked off uh attic anything going on before you got going on before we you know get out of here a pretty big video coming out probably monday i was supposed to have it out this week and mm-hmm. it's done i just got to uh do a little bit of editing but there's just been so much stuff that's constantly in like out every day mm-hmm. that like last week i just i don't like releasing two videos in one day yeah yeah, yeah. And, that happened a couple times though right uh yeah very 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 rare do i release mm-hmm. two videos in one day but you know every day i was okay i'm going to release the video today something else would happen and it's just like i had this new thing where it's like if i have a little bit more of an evergreen content that's not time sensitive or related to news if there's news videos those are priority because those news videos will be less relevant this time tomorrow so you know every day i gotta push it back more and more i was gonna release it today but i was like dude i i probably spent 20 hours on making content last week i was like Saturday, I'm I'm taking off because on Sunday I gotta do IOP. So, mm-hmm. hey, ain't nothing uh, wrong with that. You put in uh, more than enough content. I think I might live stream today. Though. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get some games uh, done. I'm gonna, I got some videos coming up that I'm gonna be recording. Uh, try to do things differently so I can you know put out some uh, confidence because I can't I can't keep up on a news thing. I mean, I sure I can stream, I can you know put out gameplay, but gotta get creative so you know i thank you guys for backing me and and rocking with me uh thank you guys for tuning in for another episode we'll see you guys again next week and make sure you subscribe to the channel um got some more things coming out uh some music some videos and everything so as always guys man xbox is the best box i am the best bot good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe we are out of here peace peace peace